Alright, uh, this is the first video on rational functions and we're going to look at some properties. You've already seen rational functions. Here's one from you've seen before, I'm sure, f of x equals 1 over x. The graph looks kind of like this. Uh, you notice right off the bat there's a problem with the domain, right? This function is not defined when x equals 0. What would you, now as x goes to infinity, remember this no, notation, as x goes to the right, think of x getting very big positive, notice the y values are getting close to 0. As x goes to negative infinity, that means x goes to the left, very ne negative numbers. The y values are also getting close to 0, but they're negative. Now, you maybe you've not seen this notation yet. x goes to 0 plus, that means x is getting close to 0 from the right. How do you keep that straight? Well, think of the positive numbers on the right, negative numbers on the left. So if x goes to 0 plus, that means you're coming to 0 from the positive side. So the function values are getting big, you're going to infinity. When you see this notation, x goes to 0 minus, that means you're coming from the left. As x goes to 0 from the left, notice the y values are getting very negative, so we'd say f of x goes to negative infinity. Alright, uh, so let's define what a rational function is. Rational function is kind of a generalization of a rational number, in a, in a sense. A rational number might be the ratio of two integers. A rational function is the ratio of two polynomials. So let's see... Uh, some, sometimes you can use uh, transformations to, to sketch some of these. Uh, for example, isn't this just a transformation of 1 over x? If your known function is 1 over x, you can um, think of this function here as uh, f of x minus 2. Isn't that just a horizontal shift to units to the right? Which, In other words, add two units to each x-coordinate. So the graph looks like this. By the way, this is, this, is, this is called a vertical asymptote. We'll talk about this more in just a minute. Uh, but uh, 1 over x had a vertical asymptote at 0, so when you shift the graph over 2 units to the right, uh, this function is going to have a vertical asymptote at 2. Here's another one. If your known function is f of x equals 1 over x, wouldn't this just be f of x plus 1 minus 3? So this x plus 1 inside the parentheses is a horizontal shift 1 unit to the left, which means you're subtracting one from each x-coordinate. And this is a vertical shift down three units, which means you're subtracting three from each y-coordinate, so the graph looks a little bit like this. Notice the vertical asymptote will be negative one, and this is called the horizontal asymptote. We'll talk about this a lot in, in the next video. Uh, the horizontal asymptote gets moved down two, so, so it'll be negative three. I should say the horizontal asymptote gets moved down also, which so the horizontal asymptote now becomes negative three. Anyway, let's start talking about vertical asymptotes. Um, vertical asymptotes are defined to be vertical lines. All right, it's x equals something. So that the, basically, as x gets, gets close to that number, x equal a, uh, the function blows up. That's what this says. There's lots of possibilities. Uh, some, sometimes you might have the function going to positive infinity on one side, negative infinity on the other. Other, other times you might have the function going to either positive infinity on both sides or negative infinity on both sides. And these other two cases, you've already seen these before. Uh, um, so you don't have to have a vertical asymptote on both both sides of a function. Uh, like, like for example, the logarithm function. You can have a vertical asymptote on one side, but not the other. Okay. So, the question... Okay, so the next question is, how do you find the vertical asymptotes? Well, vertical asymptote is going to occur where the denominator is zero. But it turns out, just because the denominator is zero doesn't guarantee you're going to have a vertical asymptote there. For now, let's assume that the denominator is 0 at x equals c. In other words, there's a factor there that makes the denominator 0. But the top is not 0 there. So let, let's, let's assume that for now. In that case, there will, there will always be a vertical asymptote. So look at this first one. x equals 3 makes the bottom 0, but not the top. So you're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. The graph looks kind of like this. Now, let me mention this. We'll come back to this later. But whenever you have a factor on the denominator where there's a vertical asymptote that's raised to an odd power, Remember the multiplicity from polynomials? Here the multiplicity is 1, but if you had x minus 3, say, cubed, or to the fifth power, uh, it would have the same basic shape. Whenever you have odd multiplicity at a vertical asymptote, they're always going to be going to different places. One will go to positive infinity, one will go to negative infinity. But if you have um, a, a zero on the denominator, where there's not one on the top, of even multiplicity like this, then, then what will always happen there is, 
uh, you're going to go, you're going to have a vertical asymptote where both are going to go to positive infinity, or both are going to go to negative infinity. So if this were x minus three to the fourth, it looks similar in, in in some ways. So this is helpful to know when you want to graph these, isn't it? How about this one? This one, it turns out, the denominator is never zero, so you don't always have to have a vertical asymptote at a rational function. And this one, let, let's take a look at this one. Uh, when you factor this one on top and bottom, uh, notice that this, this has no real zeros, so that means you're not going to have any uh, vertical asymptotes from there. Here, though, x equals zero, notice there's no factor of x on the top, so you will definitely have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. The graph looks kind of like this. And since the multiplicity of x is one, they're going to go to different places, see? All right, let's keep on going here. So what happens if you have a factor on the bottom where you also have a factor on the top where that are both zero? It turns out there, there may be a hole there. I'll show you why, why, why you may have a hole there. Here, here's, an, here's a very simple example. And also I'm surprised the book doesn't talk about this because th this is very important for Math 151. Uh, you may think there is a vertical asymptote here, but, but there's not, and here's why. If you factor the top and bottom, the x minus 1 cancels, you see? So, what, what does that mean? That means that this function is actually equal to x, the function, the linear function x plus 1, as long as x doesn't equal 1. So that means, so it, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's basically like a linear function. So the question is, well, okay, if you don't have a vertical asymptote at x equal 1, what do you have? It turns out, it's called a hole, or it's also sometimes called a removable discontinuity. So there's a little a hole there, but there's certainly no vertical asymptote because the function doesn't blow up. Let's do some more. Um, hole at x equal one. Uh, this one, if you factor this one here, you would get uh, x plus two, x minus two, x minus two, x plus one. So these x minus twos cancel. You're going to have a hole there. You're not going to have a vertical asymptote. Ah, but you still have x plus 1. So you understand you're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equal negative 1 and just a hole at x equal 2. All right, let's look at this one. This is really important right here. When, when, on, the, on, on problem C, when you uh, factor the top and bottom, you get this. Notice you're going to cancel the x with the x on the bottom. Ah, but you still have one left on the bottom. So if you, if you, if you cancel the factors and you have one left on the bottom, then it's actually going to be a vertical asymptote uh, at x equals zero. It's not a hole because you still have a you still have a uh, a factor left. Anyway, you're going to you have a vertical asymptote at at, um, at uh, zero, and you're going to have a vertical asymptote at negative one. So the graph looks like this. All right, a couple more things. How about how about um, x-intercepts? X-intercepts are going to occur where the numerator is zero but the denominator is not. Just just like with so uh, so so in other words. It's a value of x that makes a fraction zero. Well, when is a fraction zero? It's zero when the numerator is zero, right? So what is the x-intercept of this function? It would be one. The graph looks like this. Uh, same is true, by the way, with polynomial functions. If your x-intercept has odd multiplicity, this has multiplicity one, you're gonna have, the graph is gonna cross the x-axis there. It's not gonna turn, just like with polynomial functions. This one, notice you have a x x-intercept at x equal one, but with even multiplicity that means it's going to be a turning point. You see that? Just like with, it works the same with polynomial functions. Here, this function, where the numerator is zero, there are no x-intercepts, so again, you don't have to have one. This one, notice what, what happens here. When you factor the top and bottom, uh, you have an x-intercept at five. It turns out you do not have an x-intercept at negative three, and the reason is because you have a hole. You have a hole at x equal negative three, because there's a factor on the bottom, too. All right, we're almost done. Y-intercepts are pretty easy, actually. Y-intercept is what you think it is. You just plug in x equals zero and, and see what, what the value of y is. So uh, when you plug in zero here for x, you get uh, one-third. The graph looks like this. When you plug in zero for x here, you get negative two-ninths. The graph looks like this. When you plug in zero here, what do you get? You get nine-fourths. The graph looks like this. And when you plug x equals zero here, well, let's see, uh-oh, it's undefined. So uh, unlike a polynomial function, a rational function doesn't have to have a y-intercept, does it? Uh, that, and that, that, that's a situation where you, would, where you would have a vertical asymptote there, in fact. Alrighty, we'll continue this in the next video. See you then. Bye-bye.